Hey guys, it's Ed, and with the long-awaited release of Tormox MX series mills finally upon us, we had to get one for our shop and see just what they could do. We ended up with 1100 MX number 8, and today we'll be showing you guys unboxing, assembly, and the first chips on that machine. I could not contain myself and had to crack open all the crates. Oh yeah! Our new intern Justin did the bulk of the work with me lending a hand on things like lifting the machine onto its base and letting him know little tricks like it's okay to smack the sheet metal around a bit with a dead blow to get the holes to line up. Once he had been imparted with these nuggets of institutional knowledge, the thing went right together over the course of a few evenings with no issues. As with the M-Series machines, this has the updated enclosure style and the extended 11-inch Y-Travel. Right, you see, the others, they only go to 9.5, but these go to 11. Being an MX, it also has the 10,000 RPM BT30 taper spindle with an encoder for rigid tapping and clear path servos on all three axes. The standardized BT30 taper means that with this machine you will have nearly unlimited options in terms of tooling styles and providers. We're already using holders from Mari Tool, Sandvik, and YG1 and are really looking forward to trying hydraulic, shrink fits, milling chucks, stuff that previously you just couldn't run in a Tormach. By virtue of having a pole stud style tool holder system, the MX machines come standard with a power draw bar so it's really nice to not have to purchase and install that separately. On any spindle that has pull stud style tool holders, something that should be done periodically is lubricating the draw bar and its retaining balls or retaining collet. If you don't do this, you'll probably get sticking and popping during tool changes and it just sounds super unhealthy for the machine. The way that one of our Haas techs showed us to do this is to put some grease on one of the pull studs, insert it into the spindle several times, give a shot of WD-40 up into the spindle bore, and then, as wrong as it feels, spray some air up into the spindle bore to distribute this thinned down mixture of grease and WD-40. In terms of options we did go with, the Pathpilot control panel has been great. It's a little pricey at around 1800 bucks, but having the screen mounted at this orientation with physical knobs and buttons below makes it a lot less jarring to go back and forth between this and all of the other controls we're starting to have around the shop. The knobs for feed rate and spindle RPM overrides make it much easier to feel for that sweet spot if you're getting chatter or if you're trying to determine how far you can push a recipe. The operator console does include several big ticket items that you would otherwise have to buy anyway, like the control computer and touchscreen. So with that taken into account, it's really not that bad for the upgrade you get. The other big upgrade we decided to go with was the 10 position automatic tool changer. I suspect that before too long, we'll also be adding a spindle probe and automatic tool height setter. And at that point, the ease of use and convenience factors of this machine will be on par with any modern VMC. We do have several proven cut recipes up already for this machine. So card here to check those out. You're not gonna wanna miss those if you have one of these machines or are thinking about getting one. Touching off tools took a bit of getting used to on this since you don't have that contact face that TTS holders have. So there's no easy way to measure tools offline in a granite block with the height gauge. You have to actually measure the tool length offsets with tools in the spindle. And to do that, we're using this tool setting gauge that came with the BT30 tooling kit for this machine. First, zero the measuring surface to the outer reference ring using a flat surface like a 1-2-3 block. This outer reference edge is also what you will use to measure the Heimer gauge's zero length. Once the gauge is zeroed, you can use a gauge block to set the gauge's offset from the machine's spindle nose. Once I did a few tools and got a feel for the process, it went super fast and I'm coming to like this a lot better than measuring tools offline. At this point, we didn't have any holders that would accept a facing tool or even a shear hog, so I just used the same quarter inch tool for everything, including facing, uh, and the finish was excellent, all things considered. The thing I think I was looking forward to the most with this machine is the fact that the spindle has an encoder, which gives it the ability to rigid tap. 
So let's give that a try. First spot and pre-drill some 201 holes for quarter 20 threads. It was at this point that Ed noticed several small coolant leaks appearing at the base of the machine. But this appears to have just been the result of having not quite enough butylene sealant in the areas where three panel joints intersect. So once we shoved a little more of that in there, uh, things dried right up. Back to the tapping. Since the machine always knows rotationally where the spindle is, it can safely feed rigidly held taps in and out of holes at the proper thread pitch. Sweet. I was happy to see that even at this low RPM and in the high belt range, there was no noticeable bogging down, um, didn't seem to struggle at all, just chewed right through it. So this new feature changes everything in terms of being able to tap parts right on the machine, and even more so in my opinion, being able to do quick in-place fixtures with threaded holes for work holding. Expect to see a lot more of that in future widgets. Now back to that quarter inch tool to see what this thing can do on adaptive pocketing. Power in the 8K range is excellent. Could use a bit more coolant pressure, but it keeps the chips out of the immediate path of the cutter. Uh, be nice if there was enough force to blow them completely away, but that's just sort of a nitpicky thing. And finish contouring at 10k leaves us with a beautiful finish. I uh, have to also attribute some of that to the increased rigidity of the BT30 taper tooling. Like I said, we do have the tool changer for this now and are in the process of getting that installed. So keep an eye out for this machine in future widgets as we get to know it better and show you guys what else it's capable of. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Oh yeah!